I'm Alan Bolio with ITR Economics, and welcome to this edition of Trends Talk. Today, we're going to talk about February. And since it's about the middle of March, it makes sense we talk about the month that just passed, but I want to do it in two ways. I want to talk about what happened in the month, but I want to try to put things in context as well. What we're not going to talk about is some March things like the Silicon Valley Bank. Brian touched on that in the, his last Fed Watch, and he and uh, Pal Stevens will have more to say about that in our executive series webinar. So I don't want to go into their territory. I mean, it's fascinating, a lot going on. They'll cover it all. If you want a quick summary, the Fed Watch is a good way to do it, or I can give you a couple of sentences and that um, there are some structural issues in the banks, but not in the system. And the SRB, for instance, was under Fed Watch for a year, and then they imploded as stock uh, as bond values went down and they had poor structure, poor performance, poor plan, and it came back to haunt them and their investors. And uh, same with the um, Credit Suisse, et cetera. So in any event, Brian will deal with that. That's not our issue today. Today, I want to make sure that we're focused on basic economics as opposed to the, I want to say hype, but the overstimuli that comes from focusing on the banks. For instance, in February, retail sales went down uh, from January, as they were apt to do, and the media reported that it was a weak February number and probably made the Fed happy. And maybe it did make the Federal Reserve Board happy, but let's put uh, the February weakness in context. The February uh, number did come down, and it was a little on the weak side in terms of steeper than most would like to see. But it followed the January that was truly impressive in the mildness of the decline. So when we smooth it out into the three-month moving total and see a seasonal trend, the seasonal trend for both real and nominal was equal to last year, which means it was pretty good. Not fantastic, but pretty good. And it was only slightly milder than median. So what's it mean? It means the consumer is still out there. The consumer is not falling apart. The consumer is not uh, out there spending tons of money They're going to overheat the economy, but neither are we on the precipice of destruction, as some would have us to believe. We are on the edge of uh, that slowing down and coming to later this year, that recession that we've been talking about at ITR because of the interest rate rise. When we look at disinflation in February, inflation rate came down to 6%, which is good. Remember the peak was 9.1% back in June of 22. Uh, it was not as low as the Federal Reserve Board wanted, or as far as a lot of people wanted, but it's still disinflation. And in and of itself, that's good news. But at that level, you can expect that the Fed will continue to raise interest rates. We are expecting that. I hope that you are too. And uh, as that happens, don't be surprised. Don't think that it means great shock waves are going to go through the economy. I think we're just going to uh, continue to see the Fed raise rates for a while yet. That's not going to change our forecast. You know what it is, mild recession for late 23 and for most of 24 in industrial production. Which brings us to the uh, last no set of numbers, industrial production for February. The industrial production in February uh, was a milder than median rise from January. Okay, mild than median is not bad. It was a milder rise, milder rise, excuse me, than we saw last year, but last year was uh, quite the rise. It was an impressive rise. So milder than median is still a good number, but let's put it in context. The rise we saw from January to February in industrial production was steeper than the previous 10 years. And if we take out last year's really steep rise, we go to the 10 years before that, it was still steeper than that. Go back before COVID, it was steeper than the 10 year average of that. So uh, let's, Put in February in context, it's a pretty good month for production. The rates of change are still in phase C. They're still signaling we're on track for that decelerating rise and then the recession. As a matter of fact, the 12-month moving average is on the flat side right now, and the three-month moving average is on the flattish side right now. You can expect uh, you know, that sluggishness to continue before we see that mild decline again late this year. But as the month goes, it's telling us you don't need to worry about anything in the moment. And as we look at the larger trends, we're on track with the outlook. Now, what is going right? Automotive. Automotive had a, a great month. February came in 14.1% above the year ago level. The 312 is in phase C, which means we're seeing some decelerating rate of rise, building in the rates of change. But the February increase 
uh, of 11.55% from January was a steep, uh, it was solid, it was slightly steeper than median. So the automobile industry, while it's slowing, it's not showing signs of falling apart. And we should see the negative pressures increase in automotive in the second half of this year with perhaps a mild decline in the 12 month moving average. But for right now, the February number says, if that's where you are, you should plan on a few more months of upside activity with some um, slowing growth and then some mild decline later in the year. If you're in aerospace, nice 112 of 7.8% above year ago levels. It was a nice increase. Uh, it was pre steeper than the previous 10 years. Aerospace, you're doing well, and you're going to continue to enjoy some of that rise until uh, later in the year again. So on a whole, February, good month. In context, right in line with forecasts. The outlook there is, as we have said, slowing growth for the macroeconomic environment and recession. But the key comes, what do you do with it with your company? How are you going to relate that to your rate of growth and your timing? And if you're going to go to recession and if you are, what's it going to look like? That's where you need your rates of change and you need to work on your rates of change. I was just talking to a, a friend of ITR earlier today saying he's surprised by how many people have access to that information, but don't take advantage of it. Let me encourage you to please take advantage of it. Rate of change information, how to is right on our website on the methodology. Go there, compute your rates of change, track it against lead indicators. If you're on the industrial side of the economy, wholesale trade distribution, track it against US industrial production. You'll get a great handle on where you're going and what this all means for you. And as you do that, you will, Turn down the noise of all those other things that are going on and coming at you. Thank you for joining me for this issue of Trends Talk. We'll see you next time around.